Hey Savant Squad, what is happening? Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at The Savant Life and also search for my page on Facebook and give it a big old thumbs up. Oh, hey YouTube, how are you doing? This is Aslan from The Savant Life and uh, this video is a very, very different one. I'm not going to be riding any bikes, I'm not going to be reviewing anything. In fact, if you don't like the sight of my face or the sound of my voice, you might as well stop watching this video right now because this video is all about me talking about the most important news stories in the motorcycling world. This is an experiment that I randomly came up with on a Sunday morning and I decided to call the series Breaking News. You get it? The, the wordplay, the pun? You have breaking news on a news channel and then this is also breaking as in the kind of brakes that you hit on a bike when you're going too fast. You get it? I hope you do. I mean, it's not that much fun when I have to explain it. All right, but uh, let's get on with things. So I don't have a set schedule. I'm not going to make this into a weekly show or anything of that kind. Uh, I'm just making this one episode. We'll see how this one turns out and uh, then I'll make one whenever there is enough news stories to talk about. So with that being said, let's cut right to the chase and get started with the very first. Yes, we're making a tradition. This might just be us, you and I together creating history. So with that being said, let's get started with the very first episode of Breaking News right here on The Savant Life. And for the very first story in breaking news, let's talk about Royal Enfield. Yes, that cult brand that inspires such a dedicated, passionate, loyal, almost bordering on fanatical fan following, not just in India, but pretty much all across the world. And boy, oh boy, are they milking that fan following to its absolute limits because they have now launched the Pegasus 500. If you don't know what the Pegasus 500 is, it is nothing but the classic 500 with a new paint job and a very retro, cool World War II kind of positioning. Now, as most of you might remember, Royal Enfield used to supply motorcycles not only to the Indian Army, but also to the British Army way back in those days when you and I or even our fathers were not born. Yes, so now they're harking back to that time and like really pulling out nostalgia, polishing it up real nice in a green paint and a brown paint and selling these motorcycles at a real premium. The Pegasus 500 is going to be available only in two colors, the dusty brown and uh, the olive green. Of course, in India, we get the choice of only one color because apparently, I did not even know this until yesterday, it is not legal for any civilian to have an olive green colored bike. As a result, we get to make peace only with the brown version, whereas the international customers in the US, in UK, in Australia get to choose from one of those two colors. So to add to the premiumness of this bike, Royal Enfield is going to be producing only 1,000 of these. And out of those 1,000, only 250 of them are going to be sold in India. The rest of them are going to be shipped off to the US, to the UK, and to Australia. And uh, I'm sure customers over there will have to pay in dollars to buy these bikes, whereas we in India get to buy this at uh, 2.5 lakhs on road price in Maharashtra, and I'm sure it's going to be 2.6, maybe even 2.7 right here in Bangalore. However, this will not be sold through the showrooms. You will not be able to go out there, get a test ride of this bike and decide for yourself. If you're convinced that this is the bike that you want, you're a collector of some kind, you're a Royal Enfield enthusiast, then you can log on to their website on July 10th at 2 p.m. IST and you can buy it online on a first come first serve basis. This almost reminds me of those days when all of us used to huddle together to try and buy those Xiaomi Redmi phones and they used to fly off the rack before you could even click that mouse, right? So I don't know if it's going to be the same for the Royal Enfield bikes, but I imagine the company will not struggle to sell those 250 limited edition bikes here in India, considering just how much we Indians love Royal Enfield. Now, as far as the bike itself is concerned, it is pretty much the same as the classic 500. It has an engine which is 499cc, capable of producing 27.2 bhp of power and about 41 newton meters of torque. Pretty much everything else remains the same, apart from the aesthetics. And uh, the aesthetics are inspired from a bike called the Flying Flea, which used to be used in World War II. In fact, this bike, along with the soldiers, used to be dropped from the planes so that the soldiers could access remote areas that was not accessible by planes. Wow, that's a cool story, and the Flying Flea used to weigh in only at about 60 kgs, so that's quite an achievement, whereas this bike is going to be a massive one, and it's going to weigh in at about 185 to 190 kgs. Uh, so yeah, if you're some kind of a collector, if you bleed Royal Enfield, if you kind of get offended by the Hathi Mat Palo kind of ads by Bajaj, then this one is definitely right up your alley. 
Sticking with the Royal Enfield theme for a bit, now the Royal Enfield Classic 500 is going to be offered in the US with ABS as standard. Yes, more news as an Indian consumer for you to feel so great about yourself because the same 500 Classic does not even come with ABS as an option over here in India, but hopefully Royal Enfield will bring that out to the Desi market very, very soon. But one bike which is actually getting ABS is uh, the rather modest, but equally exciting is Suzuki Jixxer 155. Yes, the naked street bike from Suzuki is now going to come with an ABS version and uh, this was already the case with the fared version, the SF, but they have decided to bring it in with the Suzuki Jixxer 155 as well. And that is great news because slowly but surely, I think all of the 155 to 160 cc bike manufacturers seem to be taking safety rather seriously in the Indian market and they're introducing ABS at least as an option and that I think is fantastic. This will make the uh, bike dearer by about 10,000 rupees over the base variant and uh, 5,000 rupees over the mid-level variant which comes with disc brakes. Uh, so if you've been waiting to get your hands on a naked bike and you've uh, been holding off because you didn't really have ABS then, now the Honda Hornet and the Suzuki Jixxer both 155cc to 160cc bikes that come with ABS as an option and I think it's an investment that you should definitely make if uh, you think that safety is important to you. But ultimately what this proves is that Suzuki takes its flagship offering in that 155cc segment very very seriously and that is the reason why they're going ahead and adding all of these kind of features while on the other hand Honda in 2018 won't even introduce a kill switch. Try figuring that one out. But anyways, those are small little problems that Honda does not need to worry about really because uh, motorcycles are clearly their second priority in the Indian market. They're doing really, really well. In fact, they're killing it in the Indian market. They sold 5.5 lakh vehicles in the month of May all across India and that is a staggering number. But you know what is even more interesting? Out of those 5.5 lakh vehicles sold, 3.5 lakhs of those were scooters. Yes, Honda is making an absolute killing and laughing its way to the bank, selling the Activa 5G, the Activa i, the Dio, the Dio Deluxe, the Honda Grazia, and the list goes on and on. So they don't really need to be that worried about their motorcycle sales. So if you were really holding your breath, thinking that Honda is going to be introducing the CBR 250 RR anytime soon, then, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a joke. Honestly, it makes me laugh. You can kiss those hopes goodbye because you're going to have to be content with the facelifted Honda CBR250 because that is as good as it gets when it comes to motorcycles and Honda for the Indian markets. And finally, let's talk about motorcycle manufacturers who've been keeping enthusiasts like us at the edge of our seat and waiting with bated breath for their newest offerings. And yes, if you've not guessed it already, I'm talking about the BMW guys. Now, for the longest time, they've been talking about the BMW G310R and the BMW G310GS. But I think these guys have been taking much longer than the TVS guys did with their Akula or their Apache or their Apache RR310, whatever they call that thing, which is actually a pretty impressive bike. I was just pissed off about how long they, they really made us wait. But uh, the BMW guys really seem to be outdoing them and it's you know not really a coincidence that BMW seems to be working with TVS in terms of launching this bike, producing this bike and all of that. So I, I, I'm almost getting this feeling that whenever TVS is involved, there are these really ridiculous lengthy delays as far as launching the bike is concerned. But I think finally, like they say, there is some light at the end of the tunnel and no, it's not a freight train because uh, by all indicative reports, BMW is finally going to be launching these two bikes in India towards the end of June or beginning of July. In fact, they've already started accepting bookings and uh, a guy on XBHP went ahead and booked his bike the indicative price range for the BMW G310GS is supposed to be between 3.5 to 3.7 lakhs on road, which I think is a bit expensive for a bike that has been manufactured in association with TVS right here in India. However, you do get that BMW tag if uh, that is something that you've aspired towards. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how this bike really pans out, if it is really worth all of the hype. I would be more inclined towards going with the naked version, which is the G310R, and uh, that I'm guessing would be somewhere between 3.2 to 3.3 lakhs. But ultimately, I just want those bikes to arrive over here so that we can test ride the bike and see for ourselves what it really has to offer. By the way, I don't really understand these guys going ahead and booking these bikes and paying 3 lakhs without even getting to ride the bike. That blows my mind, but apparently there are people like that out here. And by the way, if you didn't know, the booking amount 
is 50,000 rupees. Yes, that's 50,000 green ones if you have to just go ahead and book a bike that you've not ridden or you've not even seen or touched as yet. 50,000 rupees, that's what it's gonna cost you. All right, that is it. That is it for the first edition of Breaking News. Uh, I just randomly put this together, cobbled it up together on a Sunday afternoon, and this will be published on a Monday, which I think is a good way to start off the week by looking at all of the you know, important stories in the motorcycling world from the previous week gone by. So uh, let me know what you guys thought of it. I know that this is very different from what I typically do, but I thought this would be a nice addition to my kitty. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed it. If you have any stories that you would want me to cover in the next edition, then drop them in the comment section below. And as always, sound off with your own thoughts, suggestions, ideas, opinions, whatever it might be. Drop all of them in the comment section below. If you like the video and uh, if you want me to do more of these, then do hit that like button and show me your love. If this by any chance happens to be your first time around the Savant Life, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, also smash that bell icon so that you can be notified when yours truly puts out more new videos like this. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here now and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Edit this video, have it ready for Monday, all of that good stuff. I will see you the next time around, but until then, thank you so much for watching. Take care, ride safe, be good, and as always, have fun.